fire me? Why? The station's integrity? You're kidding me, right? If you think I've screwed up that badly, then fire me. Got that? Fire me. Yes, do it. We are not done. Oh, but we are, my dear. We are done. Hello, everyone. How's life been treating you? I'd like to welcome you back to Agatha Christie, Murder on the Orient Express. Mm, now, if you remember last time, we had to play as Joanne Locke. Ended up finding out how they killed the little girl, which I still can't understand. Why would you murder a child like that? Let's see, I'm at 201. Okay, here we go. Most of the passengers pass by the bar during the day. They eat, drink, write. Maybe I can use this information for my investigation. Oh, I gotta try to remember everything. I know dude was stabbed like nine times. Best way would be this one, because I don't want to alert the killer by asking. I mean, they going to lie anyway. Let's see if this the first one. Avidia. I was going to ask Bonk. It could work. He appears to be an observant young man and serves the passengers regularly. I just hope he's not the murderer, though. What is the best way to know if someone is right here that left me? Ask everyone to hold something in their hands. Ask everyone to write something. Ask everyone to reveal which hand they try to be slick with it. Right. I'm yeah. about to sit here. If I ask them to write something trivial, they may do it instinctively with their dominant hand. What is the best way to know if someone is right? It's the same thing. Many times do we need to answer this? Remember the conversation. For people I have tested before, remember if they used her, right? I do not think that's the right answer. I try to Given get, all his regular uh, duties and the number of... Radio. Always the longest yeah, answer, I huh? I will remember which people use their right or left hand. That's just good hey, memory. Voila. remember all that that's just good memory right over here so start with her mademoiselle debenham i have a few questions for you of course let's start with your movements last night there's little to tell i went to bed and slept did you know the man who was killed i saw him for the first time during lunch yesterday did you notice anything about him well if i believed in auras i might say he seemed Dark. What's that supposed to mean? Would you mind writing your address on this paper for me? Not at all. Right here. That's it. Mademoiselle Debenham is right handed. I mean, the way they stabbed that man might be a woman. Do you recall what time Mademoiselle Olsen went to get some aspirin from Madame Hubbard? I remember glancing at the clock. She left our room just after 10.30 p.m. Was she away for a long time? About five minutes. That confirms what Madame Hubbard told me. Yeah, that's too... That's not too long. It would, take, it would take more than five minutes to kill somebody. Do you smoke by any chance? No, I never have. Ever, everybody had that moment when they had to have that trying moment. Do you own a scarlet nightgown? No, it isn't mine. Whose then? I don't know. What do you mean? You do not say, I have no such thing. You say, it isn't mine. Meaning that you know who it belongs to, am I correct? Oh, I see. No. I woke up this morning about 5 a.m., with the feeling that the train had been standing still for a long time. I opened the door, and I saw someone in a scarlet kimono some way down the corridor. Her back was turned. 
it was impossible to see who it was. I understand. I meant to say a spirit though. Everybody got that spirit moment. I mean, I tried smoking. It just didn't stay with me. Though. It didn't stick with me. That's it. Thank you for your assistance, mademoiselle. Controller playing Xbox too much. Alright, interrogate six people. Uh, this looks like she's right handed. Good job. Right. Adequate. Voilà. That's it. Bait. Smoked. So some we can already remember who smoked. But she's smoking? I mean, she looked like a smoker. I'm going to say does not, though, because she kind of elderly. I did quite. Gotta take care of your health when you get that age, huh? He said he smokes. Good. A tropical cigarette? I do not think that's the right answer. Are you a smoker? Fantastic. I know I was good. I swore I heard he smoked. Good job. So we know by memory who smokes. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Yeah, that's a strong mind right there. All oh, that's going down. Just remember everything about people. I'm gonna look at that previous shit. Mademoiselle, I am sorry to disturb you, but I need to ask you a few questions. Are you the investigator? I am. We are lucky you are on the train. What do you want to know? You know, I'm like, I'm not into fashion and all, but that scarf, I don't think that scarf go with that fit. I hear, mademoiselle, that you were the last person to see the murdered man alive. I do not know. It may be so. I opened the door of his compartment by mistake. I was much ashamed. Why is she talking it was like this? a most awkward mistake. You oh, actually slow. saw him? Yeah. He was reading a book. And what did you English do after that? Language. I went into the American lady, Mrs. Hubbard. I asked her for some aspirin, and she gave it to me. I usually carry extra aspirin for the refugees. But I gave mine to a camp in Turkey. They needed it more than me. Camp in Turkey. Oh, so we haven't did this yet. Oh, I get nerves. I wasn't even paying attention. German. Forty six. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. But she's 27, that's just so old. I must admit, I'm not right. Okay, so she's a Swedish nurse, 46. Et voila. Stop being cocky. It took about five times to get it. Did Mrs. Hubbard ask you whether the communicating door between her compartment and that of Monsieur Ratchet was bolted? Yes. She's Swedish. And was it? Yes. And after that, what did you do? After that, I went back to my compartment, took the aspirin, and lay down. That was around 10.50 p.m. Is 10 there 50. anyone else in your compartment? Yeah, a young English lady. Very nice, very amiable. After the train that, yeah, left she told me, uh, did she leave the compartment? She told me she was Swedish. No, I am sure she did not. Why are you so sure if you were asleep? I sleep very lightly. I am used to waking at a sound. I am sure that if she had come down from the berth above, 
I should have awakened. Did you so yourself leave the compartment sleep, after right? that? Not until this morning. Do you have a scarlet silk kimono, mademoiselle? No, indeed. I have a good, comfortable dressing gown of Jaeger material. Simple as that, huh? Do you smoke, mademoiselle? No, I can't stand the smell of tobacco. Perhaps you will be so amiable as to write me down your address. With pleasure. Right. Mademoiselle Olsen is indeed right-handed. Seems like a whole bunch of people is right-handed. That's enough of a question in her, huh? This was a very interesting conversation, Mademoiselle. I thank you. If you have any other questions, I'll be in my compartment. Good luck, Mr. Poirot. Those eyes green. This guy up in the left. There we go. Contradiction. Select two elements which reveals the contradiction in the testimonies of Miss Abraham and Miss Soul. I tried to catch myself there. But where we at? Went to bed around 10, 55 p.m. Slept through the night. Do not leave. Oh, 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 Should have heard Miss Eve at 5 a.m. Right. Strange, this story. If Mademoiselle Olsen is such a light sleeper, why didn't she tell me about Mademoiselle Debenham getting out of bed? Right. She even made a point to tell me the opposite. That's she went out of her way to lie again. Well, to lie for the first time to test like... Her Q. I had to be deterring people from the booth. I gotta confront her. But not right now, though. Do I talk to her again? Nope. To the others. Where are they at? One, two, three. Two people here. Uh, let's talk to him first. Monsieur Fauché, may I disturb you for a moment? Of course. How can I help? I love the screen taking too long. It is, of course, about the murder of Monsieur Ratchet. Can you tell me your movements last night? I understand. Yesterday evening, I took a break at Vinkovsky Station with Hotaru. We then went to our quarters in the staff accommodations, a section of the luggage car. Freya was there, reading, and I went to bed right after. Freya is there now, I think, and Hotaru is in the kitchen. At the chef and the baker. They can verify my story. What time was this? 11.30 p.m. or a bit after. The snow is beginning to fall heavily. I see. Thank you. Can you write your address on this paper? 11.30 p.m. You want to pay me a visit? Between 11 and 12.30. <laughs> Who knows, Monsieur Fauché? Right hand again. He is right handed, there can be no doubt. Smoke. Are you a smoker? I'm trying to quit, but yes. I'm now down to just one pack of cigarettes a week. If you're looking for a heavy smoker, you should talk to Hutaru. That's not a heavy smoker. One pack a week. I'll, I'll smoke. Thank you, Monsieur Fauché. To all the smokers out there. Is that a light smoker? So I said one pack a week. And again, this is. Oh, this is modern. This is modern. One pack is like what? 
14 in a week, two a day. No walking in. Trying to go talk to them first, but I'll observe her instead. Right end it. I'll keep an eye on them instead. I see right here. I saw everybody was right here. Ain't nobody left here? I mean, I heard a little, little rumor that back in the day, people was right-handed. They were scared to be left hand because it was the mark of the devil. I guess we done with them, huh? Come on with the loading screen. Monsieur Fauché, may I disturb you for a moment? Of course. How can I help? There's nothing new to ask. Thank you, Monsieur Fauché. I'll come back to you if I have more questions. Why is that thing not damn gray? Is there something there? Mustache. Another delightful trophy for my collection. How about you? Ah, Monsieur Maury. Would you have a few minutes to give me? I have some questions to ask you. Do I look like I can answer questions? The rumor is spinning. What My head eat? is about to explode. <laughs> you were celebrating last night? Celebrating? When Freya always wins. Ah, oh, what am I saying? If you want my answers to your questions to make sense, Help me recover. You see there, the that magnet on the open? bridge. That is my special recipe. I call it my day after survival tonic. If you could make me my special tonic, I might survive long enough to answer your questions. John knows the recipe. Why do I gotta make well. you something? He can help you with the drink. preparation. Very well, you if I must, I must. I will make you your day after survival tonic. This man is the chef, but I gotta make him something to drink. Oh. Mm. Any Japanese. Oh. But you can't make your own stuff. Okay, that was easy. Like I don't wanna hear this. Though. You can't make your own stuff. I just need to ask a few questions. A half lemon juice, 15 CL or D of fresh sparkly water. Six mint leaves, six CL, five CL ginger juice. Half, six, six. Hopefully we can remember this. That's my memory out. I even need to open this. What's this? I can use this lemon squeezer to get juice if I find fruit. That's a lemon squeezer? Where's the fruit at? Oh. Right in your face, huh? Missing half of the tonic and be patient, Earl. Be patient. Oh, there we go. Hmm. 
Now we use the squeezer. Not sound right though. Is that it? I have all the ingredients for Monsieur Maurice tonic. I have to go and see Monsieur Fauché so he can prepare it for me. I gotta go all the way back. I break that. Here she go. She must be sleeping or something. Monsieur Fauché, may I? Dis of course. Monsieur Fauché, I need your help to prepare a cocktail. What is this phrase? Ah, this is music to my ears. What can I fix for you? A mojito? A gin and tonic? Or perhaps a martini? Shaken? Not stirred? <laughs> it's a not too for early me, for that. But for Monsieur Maury. Ah, his day after survival tonic. He know what he wants. Unfortunately, I know it well. Here is everything that was listed on the magnet. Excellent. I can take it from here. Mr. Poirot, I'm uncertain about the lemon juice. Is it half a lemon or a full lemon for the recipe? Half. Half a lemon. I can't remember if Hotaru prefers it with ginger or without. Come on now. You I thought you all already knew this. That, uh, what's that? Thought you you've been making this for how long? Oh man. Where's that list? Is that ginger in it? Is that list. I mean we why would it be without ginger when we had to get the ginger part? I can assure you that he will want the ginger. Oh, I'm not wrong. Why would we pick up the ginger if he wasn't without it? There you are, sir. Hotaru will be himself again. Excellent. Thank you very much. Here you go, Mr. Mori. I hope this will help you. Thank you very much. Please give me a moment. While this takes effect, it will be a while, I'm afraid. But I will not move from the kitchen. Since I have to wait, do you know where I can find Mademoiselle Nielsen? Right. She is in the staff quarters in the luggage car. If the door is locked, John will have the key. Thank you. I will return. I hope you have a speedy recovery. John Block. Block. Oh, uh, how convenient. Monsieur Mori told me that you are the one who has the key to that's open very the very convenient. You was right door. there with this form. I had yes, to go all the way to right. the front. Here it is. Please don't forget to give it back to me. I will not forget, Monsieur Fauché. But you're not looking me in the eyes, though. I have a favor to ask. Could you visit the passengers who are in their rooms and explain there has been an error with their allergy and diet form? But, Monsieur Poirot, I made no errors. <laughs> of course not. Call it a computer error. Yes, it is possible. But even if I can see this is part of your investigation, I do not understand it. I you don't need to understand. You observe which hand each passenger uses. Ah. You wish to know if they use the right or left hand when they write. That is my intention. I will take on this mission for you. Excellent. You know what's us about this? He could be a killer. I'm asking him for help. You never know. Things works like that. Let's go find her. Ask her some questions. Hopefully she's still alive. That's it. It's open now. Right there, just chilling. Man, they was back here. Ooh. Empty hey. rum bottles. Got 
big those bottles is. Drinking like that. A deck of cards. I suspect they were reading diamonds and spades instead of books. Oh, okay. I see. I see. I see where he went with that one. What's that, Captain? They think they salute. I guess nothing to see here. They think they salute. Off oh, brand, Captain. Another golden mustache to treasure. Why is you back here? Hello, Mademoiselle Nielsen. May I ask you a few questions? I don't have a minute. My career is ruined, and it's not my fault. But how did this terrible thing come to pass? My supplies, passenger luggage, our living space. There is so little room. I gave the cargo handlers in Istanbul strict instructions how to stack my crates containing the ingredients I need for my desserts. So as one box is used up, it can be discarded. And these fools of cargo handlers did not follow your instructions? Ignored completely. Of they ignored her. I have four crates that must be moved from there to here to correct the order they are stacked. But placing the wrong crate on top of a smaller crate will crush it, its contents, and my career. Calm yourself, Mademoiselle. Ain't that the right order? I understand. So, the problem is, these four crates must be moved there, but carefully. Yes. I have to move these four boxes from this location to here. What? But there is not much space to move the boxes, and I have to be careful never to put a bigger box on top of a smaller one, or the smaller crate will be destroyed. The problem is clear. I shall assist you. Is this a puzzle game or what's this for? It's a mystery game or a puzzle game. Oh man, I get it now. I get it. I get it. Just a minute, just a minute. Just a moment. She said as long as the big pieces is not on on top. I get it. You're supposed to be sitting here trying to figure out who killed who stabbed somebody eight times, but this is just like she couldn't figure this out. Come on now. Was this in the book? Or he was a gentleman. Et voila. You are a lifesaver. No, you could have figured that out. You a dessert saver. Thank you. What? Thank you. I will gladly Baker? answer your questions. She could have figured that out. Questioning things now. Can you tell me your movements of last night? Last night after dinner, I stayed in the kitchen until 12 15 a.m. Then I joined Jean and Hotaru in our quarters. Then we. Then all of us read quietly in our beds until we fell asleep. A very studious staff. However, Monsieur Mori doesn't seem to have followed the same literary pursuit as the others. You and don't these need to lie. It's right there in my face. She look kind of big though. I mean, pay attention. Yeah, this is. I rather think that you didn't just read last night. Read Why something. Why say that? The empty rum bottles. Were their labels part of your reading last night? My oh, fault. Man. I must have left them there before I put them in the bin. And these are straight from the bar. Our passengers must have drunk them. What? I have my doubts. But why would she feel the need to lie? At least I hear a lie. I spoke to Monsieur Murray. After I just helped he her move boxes. Hung over. He even asked me to make him his day after tonic. He blurted out, Freya always wins. Wins what? 
Looking around, it is clear you were gambling and drinking most of the night. You don't understand. It's late when we're off duty, but we need to unwind. And now there's been a murder? Yes, I admit it. We went overboard last night. But please don't tell Mr. Book. It's against regulations. We could all be fired. Mademoiselle, I realize your difficult jobs have been made more difficult. But as you say, there has been a murder. I must have the truth. Of course. I'm so sorry. It's not such a crime. I'll leave it there and check in with Monsieur Fauché. True. I mean, there's just no need to lie about that, though. I understand you might lose your job, but somebody is dead. I think that's more important. I mean, we know, and like, we don't need to tell him that they was back here doing stuff like that. Would you mind writing your address on this paper? I'm asking everyone on the train for addresses, in case I need to contact them once they leave the train in Paris. I understand. Right. Yes, that's it. Mademoiselle Nielsen is right-handed. It's smiling too big after that. Do you smoke? No, I never have. Thank you. Of course, you know, she needs her taste buds and nose smell. To know what she cooking, huh? Thank you for your answers, Miss Nielsen. You're welcome. Okay. I understand the need to lie about little things like that. Yeah, you might lose your job, but it's not like I'm gonna tell him the whole story. You more worried about who's who's on here killing people. Well, not people killed the business tycoon yeah, I'll definitely be ready how are you mm, it's better thank you then may I ask you some questions it will not take long quickly please I have hungry passengers to feed I don't think they hungry like that Très bien. can you tell me your movements last night oh nothing special when I went off duty, I joined Joan and Freya in a compartment. I read for a short while, then went to bed early. Reading? <laughs> I'm not sure you have recovered I enough. You always talking about the truth. Reading. Don't waste what little energy you have recovered to lie, Mr. Hey, Moy. She yes. already told. Sorry, Mr. Porot. You're right. It obviously wasn't reading that made my head hard like that. But if you told Mushu Book, it could mean my job. I will keep you stranded. But I am investigating a murder. You must tell me. We're worried about the losing truth. his job. Thank you. Man, it's really worried about they really worried about losing their job, huh? Please write your address on this paper. My address? I don't see why. I think I hear Monsieur Book approaching. My address? Yes, of course. I'm scared of that, huh? Right. Another right handed person. Not surprising, most people are. You are a heavy smoker. A left hand My job. It is very stressful. Would you happen to know who vapes on the train? A banana flavor? Oh, yes. The smell disgusts me. What is wrong with a good tobacco? I do not have time to answer that. Who is it? I've only seen one person right. who vapes. It's yeah. Captain Arbuthnot. Captain Arbuthnot, I see. Who's that again? Captain. We'll find out when the time comes. That's it for now. Your testimony was invaluable to me. Thank you. Take I'll care, Mr. Him. My palate depends on your good health. I can go interrogate him now. Give him back the key. Here is your key. Thank you very much. My pleasure. About the little favor I asked of you. 
phone with the loading screen. Aha, but of course. I was able to get new allergy forms from guests who were in their compartments. Monsieur McQueen, Monsieur Masterman, Count and Countess Andrani, they are all right-handed. I also asked Princess Dragomirov, but she had her assistant, Madame Schmidt, sign for her. She is right-handed as well. You have exceeded my expectations. Well done. Thank you, Monsieur Fauché. I'll come back to you if I have more questions. Hey, so do we not know the princess? I will wait for him later. I feel like we gotta like literally interrogate everybody before we talk to him. He might just prolong the next story. Go talk to Kat. She go get back to her room if I need to confront her. Why she didn't hear her leaving at 5 a.m. Talking about she was sleeping. I don't understand why people just think it's so easy to lie. This my room. I think it's just so easy to lie, right? Like you might well just tell the truth. We all know the truth hurts, but you might well just tell it, get it over with. It's not like it's going to affect you in any way. Captain Arbuthnot, you in not, I know that you are the only person on this train to smoke e-cigarettes. We found a vial of e-liquid at the crime scene. Don't you just open the door? Will you talk to me about this, or should I pass on what I've learned to the police? Oh, okay, yeah, he ain't trying All to right. come out. Come in if you must. Really? Could it open the door for a person? I have just a few questions for you. Very well. Let's hear them. Did not help him in the beginning of the game? The young English lady, Mademoiselle Debenham, was at the Tocatlian Hotel. Perhaps you met her there? We exchanged a few words. Fellow Brits abroad, that sort of thing. Hmm. What can you tell me about Mademoiselle Debenham? Nothing whatsoever. We barely spoke. The director of the Orient Express, Monsieur Book, thinks the assassin is a woman. And that is enough to accuse her? She had nothing to do with this murder. How can you be so certain? The right. idea is absurd. Ratchet was a perfect stranger to her. She'd never seen him before. How do you know? Uh, did she tell you so? Well, yes. Maybe she did. She may have commented once upon his somewhat unpleasant appearance. If a woman is concerned, as you seem to think, to my mind, without any evidence, I can assure you that Miss Debenham could not possibly be implicated. Do you know it's clear that the captain is defending Miss Debenham, a woman he supposedly doesn't know very well. Right, she's supposed to be a stranger to you. What was you doing last night? What were you doing last night around a quarter past one? One fifteen. I believe I was still talking to that young American fellow, Mr. McQueen, the secretary of the man who was killed. We were in his compartment. He was so a like friend of on his face. No, I never saw him before this journey. We'd hit it off at dinner, and the conversation continued into the early hours. Until what time was that? Until 1.45 or so. Then I retired to my room and went to sleep. 1.45. There is nothing you can recall last night that in any way struck you as suspicious? It's nothing. A mere detail. Allow me to be the judge. Well, before right. returning to my room, I went to the lounge car to get a glass of water. When I was passing through the first-class corridor, I noticed that the door, which is just after your room, 201, was not quite closed. And the person who was inside peered out in a furtive sort of way. Then he closed the door quickly. I know there's nothing in that, but it was the furtive way it was done that 
caught my attention. Struck me as a bit odd. I understand. Thank you for letting me know. Could I have been a killer? Could you uh, write down your address here, please? My address? If you insist. Right handed. Look at this man. Very hands, boy. Do a little shaving every now and then. Werewolves. Is this e cigarette liquid yours? This man pulled out the phone. What flavor is it? Banana. Is that supposed well, to be an iPhone? That is awkward. That's my flavor of choice. But I have no idea what it was doing there. Whatever. Can you explain how it ended up? Yeah, there? I know vape, so what's the best no flavor idea. out there though? I never entered the man's room, Poirot. No, somebody That's vaping on this channel. No, somebody that watching this is vaping, so what's the best flavor out there? Thank That's you, it. Captain. You're welcome. Oh, there just to answer some questions, but it took. I don't understand. It looks like he got a relationship with that woman, though. So that two elementary reports. Interrogation. Follow a vape juice is found at the crime scene. But it's that street, so. Says three. Captain Arbor not was an alibi at the time of the crime. This. The bottle of vape juice belongs to Captain Arbor. Captain. I can't accuse Captain. His alibi protects him despite the liquid found at the crime scene. Really? Captain Arbuthnot is the only passenger to smoke an e cigarette. Even if this liquid in Ratchet's room is a solid clue, he has an alibi. I cannot accuse him without any other proof. Et voila. I mean, when you think about it, though, he could be lying. The alibi could be fake. But the thing is, he's a captain. Why would he need to stab somebody eight times, seven, eight times? One stab would have been good enough. I can't even talk to you. Uh, pardon this intrusion, Mademoiselle Olsen, but something you told me earlier confuses me. Oh, please, come in. Uh, not this person. It. How can you be sure Mademoiselle Debenham was in bed all night? As I told you, I am a very light sleeper. The slightest noise wakes me up. If Fräulein Debenham had gotten out of her bed, I would have heard her. I, I got up this morning around 8 a.m. She was sleeping soundly. See, this is what scares me, though. If somebody came and asked me the same, if a detective came and asked me the same question twice, I would know that he might have found, he or she might have found the answer. Sleeping. Uh... Are you certain you would have heard her? Yes. Why are you asking? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, dude, they know something. They asking you the same question over and over. I spoke to Mademoiselle Debenham, and she Sometimes. told me that she got up around five o'clock in the morning. She opened the door and looked down the corridor. It was then that she saw a woman in a red kimono. How do you explain that? I think I must have been sleeping very soundly not to have heard it oh put your hands up like that does that make me a suspect 
I am not accusing anyone, mademoiselle. Do not worry. I am just trying to determine what happened last night. Thank you for your testimony. I am a shoot suspect. Just won't tell you though. Gotta talk to you next. Alibis. Who has an alibi that can be confirmed by another witness? right that's the right answer okay now we can go back and talk to blunt i mean like if a detective came and asked you the same question probably twice i would think that you would just tell them the truth Personally, just tell them the truth and get it over in the first place. Unless you're the killer or you witnessed something that got threatened or something. That just can't help you, can they? They, they wouldn't allow you to die. Jeez. So, Poirot, I hope you are progressing in your investigation. Just back here dripping some coffee. I do sound good, though. There is no trace of the murder weapon on the train, as yet. The killer could have hidden it anywhere. It must be somewhere. Indeed, as you say, it must be somewhere. According to Dr. Constantine's report, the stab wounds were made by at least one right-handed and one left-handed person, and with different strength. For the moment, everyone I have checked is right-handed. It is impossible to draw any conclusions as yet. However, I still have a few people to interrogate, notably the Russian princess. You still have many avenues to explore? Indeed, the case is far from over, mon ami. I, don't know. I identified the person responsible for the bottle of liquid for the vape found at the crime scene. So, this is our culprit? Do we hold him? No, unfortunately, this bottle belongs to Captain Arbuthnot, but he has an alibi, confirmed by Monsieur McQueen for the time of the murder. Monsieur Book, Monsieur Poirot, Michel, calm down. But it's Mrs. Hubbard. She says she found the murder weapon in her room. She's very upset. Let's go, Poirot. Was we just in her room or something? Y'all could have did the cutscene. I demand to be allowed to leave this train. Madame, Please. we are in the mountains, trapped in a snowdrift. Stating the obvious. There is a murderer among us. He had the audacity to hide his weapon in my room. Please, her eyes red. take a deep oh, breath all of their eyes and tell are us red. what occurred. Where did you find the knife? I, I, I wanted to get a handkerchief from my purse. Stutter. When I opened it, I, I saw it. A bloody knife. Am I next to be murdered? I very much doubt the murderer would give you his weapon. What do you mean? Madame, he would have used it. <gasps> oh, I have it. Did you touch the knife? Of course not. What a question. I will take that as a no. All you have to do is say no. It's me with it, ain't it? Uh, that's a big... Is this knife the real murder weapon, or is it a red herring? I know. Just left it in the bag, huh? Is 
Et... Oh, so we gotta talk to the doctor again. I need you to stick the line. Mrs. Hubbard is distraught, Poirot. I should stay with her. Please go on without me. I have every right to be distraught. Thank you, Mr. Book. I want to hear her opinion. I thought it was a bad thing. Oh, there we go. Put the doctor uh, way over here, huh? I mean, we have a cell phone. Couldn't we have just called the doctor? Dr. Constantine, we may have found our murder weapon. We need to make certain. There is a pretty quick way to be sure. I have estimated the depth of the wounds. You can easily find the depth of each wound by comparing the width. There are five of them that I am not sure about. Test them, and then we will compare our results. I will do as you say, Doctor. How can we test them? I must admit I'm not right this time. I do not think that's the right answer. No, 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 not good. Think, Poirot, that is not a good answer. I'm right again. That oh. happens to me a lot. What do you think, Doctor? Is this knife really the murder weapon? There can be no doubt. You found the same depths as the estimates I made during the preliminary autopsy. I can assure you that you hold in your hands the weapon that took Ratchet's life. Oh, now she up. Thank you. I feel way better now. The rest gave you time to sleep off most of the effects of the drug. I'm still a bit groggy. That's understandable. Are you able to continue your story now? Yes. Uh, man, come on, let's yes, I think this. so. Where was I? You were explaining how you returned to the Armstrong house to tell them their poor little child was dead. Yes, that's it. I felt helpless. My part in the case was officially over, but I knew I couldn't let it go. I'll go back Daisy in the past, huh? Justice. Two days later, I returned to the Armstrong house to tell them Daisy would be released soon for burial. I was angry with myself that I couldn't bring them better news. I wasn't prepared for more tragedy. I would love to find Colin Armstrong. Oh, no, he's right here. Okay, I see. We ain't her mind. We ain't her mind. She's still Hello, Miss Moreau. I'm here to see Colonel Armstrong. Good morning, Detective. Colonel Armstrong is upstairs. He... he isn't well. We're about to go up these stairs. That's a check. Yep. Got a black hair. Time to go up the stairs, down the stairs. Three rooms over.
Good morning, Colonel Armstrong. Is your wife here? Here? No, Sonia is not here. Always one step behind. She died of a miscarriage last night. My wow. wife, Daisy, and our baby. My whole family is gone. I... I'm so sorry. I came straight here this morning. I received word that you can arrange for Daisy to be returned to you for burial. I didn't know. Well, then, now you don't have to come back. I can arrange for Daisy, my wife, and our unborn child to be buried all at once. Very efficient. Being a military man, I can appreciate efficiency. I know how hard this must be for you. No, you don't Jesus know. Jesus Christ, it's I don't off. want your sympathy. I want you to do your bloody job and catch the creature that did this. I know you won't believe me, but I swear to you, I will much. find who did this. If it takes me to the far corners of the earth, I will find them. Then go. Please go now. Go find them. I know this man is heartbroken. Just found out he lost his wife and unborn child and you still trying to talk to him. The house that once held the laughter of a child now feels so empty. I mean, it's two people here. Up. I'm a part of his case. Or the case is a part of me. Oh, you became obsessed with the case. All units, hikers in the vicinity of the cabin where Daisy Armstrong was found spotted a pickup truck drive through the barricade tape and then head up the dirt road toward where the subject cabin is located. Any car nearby who can respond? Unit 28, we can respond, but we're a ways away. Dispatch, this is 11. I'm on it. Copy that. 11, you're good to go. Copy that. I don't like, I can understand us finding out about what happened to Daisy and the kid and Empress and all that, but... Okay, there's the pickup. Let's see who ignored our barricade tape. I mean, her story is pretty much done. Eleven here. I'm at the cabin. Someone has broken in. Are you requesting backup? Not yet. Yes. I'm going to take a look around. Copy that, Eleven. Why are you requesting backup? Yes. Why wouldn't you request backup? Where your gun at? Where's that gun at? Might want to pull it out. An individual has entered a police secured area. I have to stop him first. That is not a surprise. Footprints. Pull your gun out. A forensics evidence identification marker. Forensics had to go through this place with a fine tooth comb. Man, this is not. This ain't real, man. Duct tape to silence Daisy's screams. To forensics Daisy, evidence I identification marker. This to you. Pull your gun out. He's not here. Three eight ninety two. Oh, when the poor deer was killed. That's where I found Fluffy, Daisy's oh. special toy. I hope we return to. You're not here for that. I didn't even notice that. Somebody ignored the barricade tape. I wonder why. I miss this one. Oh, we can go back here, huh? Wow. Who is this? Don't shoot, officer. I'm on your side. Sir, keep your hands where I can see them. Now sure. she wants to no pull problem. the gun out. Sir, this is a crime scene. Who the hell are you? I'm a reporter. Boston 6 News. You can get us on cable even here in the mountains. They haven't heard of crime scene tape in a big city like Boston? All right. That wasn't my best move. I got all excited. I didn't expect to find the place deserted. 
It was hard to resist. You should have tried harder. I'm placing you under arrest. You should be thanking me. Look what you apparently missed and I found. Uh, that's we'll true. get to that. I don't well, know about the thank you part. That's first. true. I'm more used to asking questions, but fire away. Who are you exactly? I'm Michael Clark, journalist for Boston 6 News. Off camera, but someday I'm going to be anchor. You just wait. Do you have a way to prove that? My this press card's in the truck. What are you doing here? You should know a crime scene is off limits. I'm investigating the Daisy Armstrong kidnapping like you. Does the pickup parked in front of the cabin belong to you? Yes, indeed, it's mine. I'll check. Show me your hands. I'm going to cuff you. I'm sure we can work out a deal. Put your hands in front of you. In front. Yeah, this is not yeah, this side story, isn't it? Aren't you going to read me my rights? You have the right to remain silent. I really wish you'd exercise that one. Dispatch, this is Eleven. I intercepted a suspicious individual at the crime scene. I'll check to determine how badly he's compromised it. Then I'm bringing him in. Copy that, Detective Locke. That's, that's still not done, right? Oh, man. What do he got to do with the story? Are y'all kidding me? Clark's press card and the phone number of the newspaper is on it. Ah, good. I can give them a call. Good cameras. Candid photos of the entire Armstrong family. A reporter just doing his job. Or something else? Wait, was that the child? Or is that the picture? Hmm, the glove compartment is closed. Hmm, the glove compartment is closed. Ugh. Telephoto lens. Not so surprising for a journalist. Okay, so we nope. Not done just yet, huh? <laughs> Car keys in the sun visor. A classic hiding place. Well, at least on TV. Ah, uh, okay. So now we got the key to unlock this. How much money you got? Chicago. Clark's driver's license seems to be in order. I mean, I have no money though. The vehicle registration is not in the name of Michael Clark or a rental company. Stephen Baker. That's it. Six one three four two four. That doesn't track. Bet it doesn't. Uh, 
no one don't ask me how. But we found the number. Come on, Joanna. I it's guess we did. Follow oh, wait. Yep, we found the number. I didn't know how, Four, but it's there. The I don't want to hear. Hi, I'm Detective Joanna Locke, Berkshire Police. I'd like to speak to an editor, please. One moment, please. Hello, Detective Locke? This is Abby Wilson. I'm a senior editor. What can I do for you? Does a man named Michael Clark work for you? Yes, he does. Why? When was the last time you heard from him? Oh, it's been at least seven or eight months. That's not unusual. He works in the field? Yes, Michael Clark is what we call a stringer. He works as a freelancer. Comes up with a story we can use, we pay him. And we don't hear from him again for several months. How much is he getting? Hey, though. What kind of stories does Mr. Clark write? Mr. Clark is an investigative reporter. Mostly crime stories, to tell you the truth. He comes up with some pretty macabre stuff. Is there a or story? Do you remember what the last case he investigated was? It was a murder case. The victim was a millionaire named James Miller. He was called the Frozen Fish King of Gloucester, Massachusetts. His body turned up in one of his nets. Or, rather, most of it did. Ah, well... Thank you, Ms. Wilson. You've been a great help to me. Pleasure. I hope he's not in trouble. He can be a little pushy, but he's a good guy overall. So what's he working on now, Detective? Are you sitting on a story? Oh, Thanks again. No, this person is an editor. She was trying to get the story for free. I don't need to talk to the suspect right now. What do we need to do? Can we already do that? Oh, 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 that bunker. Just left that man in the car with the handcuffs in front. I would think they would put his hands behind his back. Oh, man, that deer. Just a minute. The deer. I knew that number was going to come in handy. Okay, 3892. I knew I could do it. I can always use safe cracking as a career move. Oh. There. Now let's see what secrets you're hiding. Hey, any more secrets than it is? What the hell is that gas can doing here? Oh, this person. Everybody having the gun in here. The oh, cap's been here. damaged. And some gasoline has leaked out. Turn on the light.
I think that's supposed to turn on a light or something. This blueprint. It looks like the bomb in the cabin. The kidnapper built the bomb here. That's kind of obvious. Okay, so this to go to over here. This I got bunker blue looks like it's it. as old as the cabin. Everything is falling apart. Is he supposed to turn all of those on? Hmm. No, doesn't work. Now what? I have to turn the... Let there be light. Doing the most, don't I? I had to put all the ones. In. Oh this side story. Perfect, it works. Hope this is the last one. February 24th. The day of the kidnapping. They knew about the party and everything. Yep, that maid got used. Good you light bulb. Oh, not this. Turn that power off. There it go. it the right way. Yeah, again, I guess it don't matter. Huh? Yes, I knew I could do it. I can always use safe cracking as a career move. Stop saying the same thing. Why is the money still here though? That's a lot of money. It's Daisy's hair clip, the same as the picture I saw at the Armstrong house. Back here collecting trophies. An expensive looking pen with the initials JM? What's its story? Eh, we'll find out. 
That looks like a hair caught in the band around the money. Forensics will tell me for sure, but that doesn't look like Daisy's color. These get locked up again until forensics get here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I mean, I would have took at least about three of those. Ten them or not. Detective or not, I would talk about three of those. I think we done here. Yeah. I hope we done here. Yeah. I'll secure the bunker for seven six. Progress at last. Who here gets caught like that? Y'all gotta be careful. It wouldn't surprise me if this man was standing outside the car or gone. Need to talk to the suspect right now. What do you need to do? Yes. Are y'all serious? The gas can I found in the bunker would match this outline perfectly. Okay, time for forensics to attack that bunker. And Clark? He's too sure of himself. I need to get him into an interrogation room and find out what really makes him tick. I know my rights. You can't keep somebody locked up in a car like this, you know. Why would you try to burn you the bunker? You wouldn't do it if I was a dog. Do they have bathrooms at the station? I have the right to make a phone call, Detective whatever your name is. Disrespect, boy. That phone is an outside line. Hello, boss. It's Michael Clark. I'm still on the Armstrong kidnap, but there's a small problem. This I got caught hairy. being someplace I shouldn't be. I'm at the police station. No, I'm not under arrest. Just questioning. Fire me. Why? The station's integrity? You're kidding me, right? If you think I've screwed up that badly, then fire me. Got that? Fire me. Yes, do it. That didn't go well. I think I got my point across. What happens now? Go ahead. Then we'll have a chat. And that was the most suspect thing I ever heard. Uh, he said, fire me, fire me. Like, see, this is what I'm saying. Like, man, this detective is maybe not that smart. Because like, you should have wait for people to arrive. So things don't get messed up. Mustache. Thank you very much. Gold mustache. Let's go. Give me back to her hero. Now that we've taken your DNA, we can begin. Interview of suspect Michael Clark, 6 p.m. March 30th, 2019. This interview is being recorded. By elves behind the mirror, no doubt? You were arrested at a crime scene where you damaged police barricade tape. I'll pay for a new role. That's a Class A misdemeanor, and it carries a $500 fine. Oh, that's unfortunate. To begin with, where were you on the night Daisy Armstrong was kidnapped? I was watching TV money in, in the my safe. motel room, but I had my police scanner on. I heard the first reports that the little girl was missing. No way the police at the scene were going to let me get close. I set my alarm so I could get on the story first thing in the morning and tried to sleep. It was difficult. Can anybody confirm where you were? No. Afraid not. I was alone and sleepless. A sad combination. And I realize a bad alibi. Look around. So I guess I confront him about Easter. Let's move on to the gas cans and what we found in your pockets when you were brought in here today. That sounds exciting. In addition to the gasoline in the back of your pickup and another in the bunker, you had a lighter and gloves in your pockets. You were going to set fire to the bunker and every scrap of evidence inside. Where to begin? 
I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I wasn't planning to use these things to destroy the crime scene. I've been around crime scenes my entire career. I brought the gloves so as not to contaminate it with my fingerprints. The gas can in the back of my pickup, I use it to put gas in the truck. Gas stations are few and far between in your mountains. I didn't know there was a gas can in the bunker. If that's true, I did you a favor. My arrival obviously scared off somebody planning to burn everything. Do you also have an excuse for your lighter? A lighter? I'm trying to quit smoking. I use the lighter as a reminder not to start again. Man, that man eased up out of that one, didn't he? You say you're a journalist, a stringer for Channel 6 News in Boston. I sell my stuff to lots of media outlets. Your camera was in your pickup. You didn't want to take pictures of the crime scene? I like to get the lay of the land. Once I see the story I want to tell, then I start documenting it. I don't know any journalist who works a case without their camera close at hand. He thinks he's invincible. I need to play his ego. That's the key. What are you doing in the Berkshires? And what is your connection to the Armstrong case? For the past few months, I've been working on a big case. Boston 6 News was looking forward to my next story. The Armstrongs have been on my list of potential targets for a long time. I changed gears when Daisy was kidnapped and started investigating the Armstrongs. Mm, so there's a lie somewhere. For the past few months, I've been working a big case. Boston 6 was looking forward to my next story. The Armstrongs have been on my list of potential targets for a long time. Wait, well, how would they be on your list if the kidnap? It won't be easy to prove he's lying. Find some evidence. And so it's obvious not that. So you just stumbled on a major kidnapping story right. during your stay in the Berkshires. Yeah, I was researching PCBs in the river for crying out loud. Then, wow, the Armstrongs. That's not a Science Sunday report. That's a lead. Sometimes you just get lucky. Boston 6 News, the press card. Your press card says Boston 6 News, and you say you started working on the Armstrong case when Little Daisy was abducted, but Boston 6 News didn't even know you were on site. Detective, if I had the inside track on this case, do you think I'm going to go only to Boston 6? I could have had a bidding war for my... I'm going to use the word, my scoop. It still doesn't sound quite right. But there is a warped kind of logic to his story. That'd be the camera then. Your camera and the pickup. There were photos of Daisy from before she was kidnapped. The Armstrongs are a famous family, like the Kennedys or Hollywood couples. Gossip sites love them. This man got a lot of gray for everything, live. don't he? I started out just stealing candid shots. Paparazzi live on getting that one exclusive shot. Steamy, intimate, whatever. Then when the kidnapping happened, I realized I was here first. What an opportunity. And I jumped at it. You have an answer for everything. Uh, You're not no. very good at this, are you? How long have you been on the job? Long enough to put you away for life. Yeah, is she a rookie? You killed that little girl. President. Let's start with why you went to the cabin. If the police were interested in it, I was interested in it. Just the cabin or the pickup? How did you find the cabin? Police radio. I heard the forensic team getting directions. Then, when they finally left the scene late this morning, I jumped in my pickup and hurried on up the mountain. You tore the tape at the entrance to the property and stomped all over the house. This constitutes a serious violation of a crime scene, Mr. Clark. I'm aware of that. I'm sorry. I'll pay oh. the fine. But I got carried away. It isn't often I get a crime scene all to myself. He's no enjoying himself. Way. I need to throw him off balance somehow. 
surprise him into making an error. Explain to me again how you got to the crime scene. I listened in on the police radio frequency. Anybody can do it with a scanner. I headed for the crime scene in my trusty pickup, like I've done for years. After the forensic team left, I needed to see the crime scene for myself. I got to the bunker just before you arrived. You said you've been driving that pickup for years? You heard right. Thanks to it, I never miss a story. You say you've been using your pickup for years, but the title certificate is Why not she in your name. The truck Ugh. belongs to somebody named Stephen Baker. Okay. I don't get why the pickup is so important to you, but I guess my ego made me say that. Yeah, the pickup was lent to me by a friend. I couldn't afford it even with a loan. I think you stole it, Mr. Clark. You needed a pickup like that for our mountain roads, so you stole that one. Try proving it. But while you run off on some wild goose chase, you can't hold me. And we ain't getting nowhere, huh? Okay, I gotta get one more. Let's see, where, where did she stand up? At? No, that Clark is lying. I need to reconstruct the whole sequence of events in order to understand what happened. Messed up somewhere. Park open the phone. What's this? Ride at the cabin. Obviously, he breaks the tape first. Damn, fucker. Can't even move that. Close the bunker. Oh, no, 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 no. That's it. Down the first go. Mistake there. If God, she is. I'll tell you what really happened. You waited until forensics left and arrived in your probably stolen pickup. You grabbed a can of gasoline from your truck. You then went into the cabin to check if Daisy had been found. You then went straight to the bunker to see if it had been discovered, planning to set it on fire and destroy all the evidence inside. Before you could start the fire, you heard me arrive. So you hastily left your gas can and closed the hatch. You didn't think I could open the bunker. If I hadn't found you, I there expect go standing you to up burn game, down boo. the cabin too. I'm not going to make fun of you, detective, or how you handled my interrogation. You're obviously very new at this. I swear I'm telling the truth. I didn't know the bunker was there until the moment you showed up. I seem to have trumped your entire police force. When I get the DNA results from the bunker, we'll continue this conversation. You have no concrete evidence against me whatsoever. The lab results will be in soon. You won't get away with this. See that call? That's your arrest warrant and a one-way ticket to prison. I'll be right back. Something happened to the place. Hello, sir. I think I found the man who kidnapped Daisy Armstrong. I'm interrogating him now. Hold on, Detective Luck. I have some bad news. Someone set fire to the cabin in the bunker. The fire department is on the scene, but they say it's too late. Th that's impossible. My suspect has been in the interrogation room with me all evening. We can't hold him. Suzanne Moreau. Her fingerprints are on the wine bottle found in the cabin. We also found an unknown person's fingerprints, but they don't match your suspects. Sir, with all due respect, I'm convinced Michael Clark is involved. Detective, I'm cutting you some slack already. Mm -hmm. We cannot hold your suspect simply because you're convinced he's guilty. We have evidence that Suzanne was working with an accomplice, Noah Garrity. I order you 
to release the reporter and arrest this Moreau. L let me just check my last lead. The DNA analysis of the hair found in the bunker safe. The results just came in. I know how hard this is. I... Okay. Get the DNA results. Detective Locke, I will give you one hour maximum. Then you close the file and arrest Suzanne Moreau. Thank you, sir. Boy, talk about Ricky mistake, huh? He was dragging out that word fire. What's going here? Nobody's even in here. I'll add these to the file. Anything that will erase Clark's smile. Oh, should have been it came in here, huh? The only comfortable chair in the whole station. But there's no time to rest. The only comfortable chair in the whole station. But there's no time to rest. Case files. A lot of them for our tiny town. An extra computer so I don't have to go all the way out to my desk. A game to him, and he doesn't expect to lose. Well, it's time to do your job, detective. All these missing people, though. Jeez. Man, I would have walked around to him. Straight swamped on him. But it got in trouble, too. Who huh? did you call earlier? An editor from the Boston Six News. An editor you repeatedly said should fire you. That was your accomplice, wasn't it? You were telling him to start the fire. An accomplice? Jonas. I know it was Noah you called. I'm saying nothing more without the presence of my lawyer. Stay right where you are. I'm not done with you yet. Wow. Do I hear grounds for a lawsuit? Some poor innocent woman is being accused instead of you. You set her up, didn't you? You have to let me go, detective. All I need is one more phone call to the lab. I know it's you, and I'm going to prove it. Who is that dude? Hello. This, this is, is Joanna not Locke. Help. I need the results of the DNA test I asked you for. Hi, detective. Sorry, we only have the DNA sequence. We haven't had time to compare it with the suspects yet. It'll take seven more hours. I'm sorry, but you are not the only one on the waiting list. Send your analysis to my computer in the office. I'll do the comparison myself. I need authorization. Jesus. I have a murderer who is going to walk free unless I get those results now. Fine, we'll send it to you right away, but I'll have to log this. Jeez. It's my last chance. She said, you're not the one on you got the waiting list. I mean, we got the murderer right here. What am I supposed to do with this? It's not going to be there. Watch. I don't see no A. TTA. Oh, that's messed up. Oh, that's messed up. It did her dirty. No, no, Suzanne. I don't understand. I was sure it would be Clark's hair. Why would you think it'd be his hair? Don't forget that she went on a date with some dude who was just using her. Obviously, they took her DNA something. They knew what they was doing. I hear this cocky man mouth. You can leave. Sorry it didn't work out for you, detective. Maybe you should consider a career change. We are not done. Oh, but we are, my dear. We are done. I Means we going to catch him at the end. I had no end. choice but to return to the Armstrong house to arrest Suzanne Moreau. You know, let's see, that's what you get. 
Get out the car. Let's do this. Get out the car. The arrest warrant for Suzanne Moreau. Yeah, I, I, we, we heard the story. Suzanne was set up by Clark and Noah. They are the kidnappers, but I'm not giving up. When Suzanne comes up for trial, I will fight for her defense. But for now, the district attorney is in charge. If I want to stay a detective, he always has the last word. It's not my job, profession. Oh, let's go. That's what she did, though, you know. She fell in love mm, with the wrong the man. Wide open. How strange. She fell in love with the wrong man. Hey, is anyone there? Miss Moreau? Miss Moreau? This is Detective Locke. Where the bed at? Oh, I'm about to let's go get her. Oh, you know Ms. what Moreau, this story is. Me? It's me, Detective Locke. You must get up now. Miss Moreau? Look at her body. Look at the size of those feet. Miss Moreau, can you hear me? Suzanne Moreau is dead. There are no traces of blows or injuries on her body. She doesn't her seem to hands. have defended herself from anyone. I think we know why. It's kind of odd. It appears Suzanne killed herself by ingesting all these drugs. All right, look at all of this. Hold up. And she took too many pills. I think we know what happened. We need to understand. Suzanne's diary is missing. Oh, never mind. Might be her dirty. Her glasses are missing. Dang. Oh, somebody killed her. Or to make it look like suicide, huh? That rain missing too. Suzanne was telling the truth about her mother. She must have realized at last how she'd been used. The death of her mother would have been an additional shock. And the self-righteous court of social media was as quick as usual to try and convict her. It's the nanny. <laughs> I am a fake 69. Avail you there. Naughty and Uta doesn't deserve to live. How can a child's nanny do such a thing? She be really pale, ratio one. Oh. She must have realized at last the death of her mother and the self. I called the district attorney to inform him. This is Detective Locke, sir. I'm at the Armstrong house. Have you arrested Suzanne Moreau? She's dead, sir. Apparent suicide, but I need a forensics team. She killed herself out of remorse for her part in the crime. We don't know that yet. I'm calling forensics now, but I wanted you to know. What a mess. Stay on site until forensics arrive. Yes, sir. Stand That's it for this story, ain't it? The investigation was officially closed. I was certain that she was innocent, and Clark had been responsible for four deaths and then vanished into thin air. With a million dollars. Dollars marked, though, and not easily spent. I didn't care if the case was officially closed. I swore, Mr. Poirot, whatever it took, I would hunt him down. 
Boy said she was just obsessed with this case, huh? Now you know you're a rookie detective. Just you know, let it go, let it go. I waited for the forensics team, then went into the station to write my report. I was officially off the case. Thank you, mademoiselle. That obviously cannot be the completion of your story. What? If I might ask a question. Of oh, course. Yeah, that's true. Why is you here? Ratchet was Michael Clark, the reporter. Ratchet was Noah, Miss Aru's boyfriend. She's trying to follow the reporter unless she knows who Noah was. Michael Clark, the reporter. He was Ratchet? Absolutely. I was the only law enforcement official to question Clark. I knew this wasn't his first kidnapping. You looked for similar cases. What do you Americans call the MMOs? Means, motive, and opportunity. Yes, I looked for someone in plain sight. Someone on the edge of a kidnapping case. Someone in plain view, keeping track of the investigations. An innocent witness, a concerned neighbor, even another reporter. And eventually you found a name behind an alias. Yes, I found a name. Same. Cassetti, the real name. The real name of the man you call Ratchet is Cassetti. This explains much, mademoiselle, but not all. It explains why she is our number one suspect. But not how <laughs> she came to That's be true. on this train. Right. Attends, she has grown pale. I, I don't know. And there she go about to go right back to Excuse sleep. Excuse me, Mr. Poirot. I don't feel very well. You are exhausted and still feeling the effects of the drug. What kind of Stay drug was that? Mademoiselle. One more effort. I need to know your recent movements. I snuck aboard the train. This I observed. You came directly to this room? Yes. Yes, and other than a couple of careful trips to the... the ladies yesterday, I never left this room. I didn't want to be spotted by Ratchet. Yesterday, I, I chatted with my roommate, Miss Schmidt, I think, here in our room. She brought me some dinner. I got very sleepy and nodded oh, off. I think we know where the drugs was at. And now she nods off again. This girl woke up. Is this a joke? I know. She must be faking, so we can't interrogate her further, Poirot. I'm with no, him on this. She really seems to have fallen asleep again. It is my fault. She must have been given a dangerous dose of sleeping pills last night. The effects should wear off soon, I hope, but I am afraid asking her to tell us her story was too much for her. Pinch her, Poirot. She's faking. Her eyes are dilated. She is not faking, and there will be no pinching. Dr. Constantine, please stay with her. Monsieur Book, ask the other passengers to gather in the dining car. There are still many questions I need to ask. But all of them together? Won't someone overhear your questioning the others? I will speak softly because I am trained to do so. They will speak softly because they want to. Very well. Right. I will do as you say. Well, whoever this Miss Smith is, I mean, she's obviously a suspect because she brought you dinner and you fell asleep afterwards. This guy, he chilling in here like it ain't nothing. But with that being said, I have to get ready for work. And uh, I still don't understand her story. Like, it's, not, it's, it's cool that we got to know the detective behind the missing girl case and how she came to find out that Ratchet was that reporter, that fake. I don't know if he was a fake reporter, but he was part of the kidnapping. We don't know who Noah is, though. Probably don't even have to care about that, too. <clears throat> now with all that being said I have to get ready for work and I hope you enjoyed today's video if you did be sure to tap that like button and subscribe to the channel until next time be safe, be well